that's what's happening. Just warming up the bike a little bit. No, I'm not going for a ride. Uh, but there, are, you know, it, it's mid-March. So it's still in the 30s here in Ohio. It's a little chilly. And uh, above and beyond that, the roads have been salted very recently. So this ride ain't going out on a road that has any semblance of salt on it whatsoever. Been there, done that. Anyway, looks like it needs wiped off a little bit. I see some dust on it, some spots just from sitting here. It was all detailed uh, earlier in the fall. So, uh, but just from condensation and stuff, being sitting out here in an unheated garage, it, it could use a, a little dusting up here. I have seen some weekend warriors out on the road and just the other day, I happened to see three of them, three younger guys, and uh, they were going down the road and they had these uh, these ape hangers. <laughs> they were up like this, riding their, their uh, bikes. Today we're gonna talk about handlebars a little bit. And, you know, what's the purpose for an ape hanger? So what is the real purpose of these ape hangers, you know, that, that you're, you're arms are up almost <laughs> well so most of them are by shoulder length you know where you're sticking straight out I that really had no purpose to it it's mostly just about style it goes back to some of the days uh, older days of uh what i like to call outlaw motorcycle clubs where they were dressing up their bikes and customizing them and they put those higher handlebars out on there and whether you know it or not, that is something that the police look for uh, because usually the ones that have the higher handlebars, at least back in the day, were well known as troublemakers. So that would be a reason that the police would pull you over. Now, if, if you were to put ape hangers on your motorcycle, you should know this, that... Uh, there are some regulations to it. In most situations, you wouldn't get pulled over. Uh, they wouldn't bother you. But if they did have a reason to pull you over, they could use that and cite you. Uh, and every state's different. Well, I wouldn't say every state is different, but a lot of states are different. Some states, you can only go 15 inches above the seat with the height of your handlebars. Some states, you can go 30 inches over the seat with the height of your handlebars. Uh, they're all written differently. Some of your handlebars can extend over the, the top of your shoulders with your arms extended straight out. So I don't know how the police do it in each state. In some states, they don't even seem to care, but you know, some states are way more strict than others. So you wanna be aware of that. The next thing you're gonna be aware of if you're gonna trick your bike out and put these ape hangers on there is that all your main controls are on your handlebars here. You know, your throttle, your starter, your uh, turn signals, your horn, your brake uh, calipers, your clutch lever, your mirrors. All that stuff controls the motorcycle. So if you're gonna change the handlebars out, you gotta know this. If you're gonna add length to these things, you also have to add length to all your cables. So it could get to be quite a costly situation. Uh, if you're handy at mechanical stuff, you can probably do it yourself without a problem. But if you're not very mechanically oriented, you may want to leave that up to a professional. Because like I said, those are your controls and you don't want to mess that up. Now, as far as comfort goes, I've heard both ways. I've heard that the, that the ape hangers with your arms extended straight out with just a little bend in your elbow can be pretty comfortable. But on the other hand, I've heard that they can be a killer. Now, and you've seen the pictures of the guys with their uh, arms almost straight up in the air with these tremendously bizarre uh, stretched out ape hangers. And that can't be comfortable to ride all day like that. No more than I would think riding a uh, sport bike where you're all hunched over the gas tank 
and you can't even sit up straight. I don't know how that could be comfortable for riding any length of time. You know, those, those bikes were made for racing, not for cruising. This bike is a cruiser, it's what they call a soft tail, the Harley Davidson. And these are not the stock handlebars. These are uh, different handlebars than what came with the stock handlebars. When I changed them out, uh, I had a guy help me and I sat on the bike and reached my arms in the most comfortable position that I wanted them. And he kind of measured everything out and uh, we tried mounting a couple different handlebars on here until we found the ones that I thought fit me perfectly and were the most comfortable. Something else you may want to know too is, you know, some of these handlebars are wider than others. You get these like Texas steer handlebars <laughs> that you're stretched way out, you know, and uh, they may be comfortable, but know also that there are laws in states about the width of handlebars too. They, they can actually measure how wide your handlebars are and you could get a citation for that, believe it or not. Yeah. So these handlebars were very comfortable for me and I've had absolutely no complaints about them since. Uh, I like them. So I don't know what you got on your bike. Uh, nowadays, you'll see a lot of these customs are really tricked out because you can do almost anything you want with a handlebar. There's, there's T bars that come up and fork out into a T. You know, there's the straight bars, there's the, the high risers, there's even lower handlebars. They come in all different shapes and sizes. So it's just all what you prefer, what you like, style. But if you're going to ride for any length of time, uh, you want to make sure you get something that's comfortable for you and not something you're going to regret down the road. You know, like I said, when you go through all the trouble to change out your handlebars, it's not a simple fix and it could cost some money, especially if you have to change all your cables and everything. So those are just my two cents worth on the, on the handlebars. And uh, you may like the stock bars that come with the bike. In most cases, those are just fine. But uh, depending on your size and build, you may want to find something that fits you a little better. You can keep the same bike, but just by changing the handlebars, you'll be able to sit up straighter. You'll be able to be more comfortable uh, and actually have better control. Now, as far as control goes, that can be important with handlebars too. They say that the ape hangers actually give you some loss of control. And I won't go into detail about how that happens or why that happens. I'm sure, if not anything else, it can Im impede your peripherals because your arms are kind of in the way of looking to the left or right. And it could, <laughs> that alone could cause an issue. But um, I know a lot of you guys have or, or some of you guys do have apes. And I would like to hear how you like them. If you, if you regret putting them on, uh, if you have had them and you didn't like it and you took them back off again, if you have them and you really like them. Basically, it's just a thing of style. And there's really no other reason for it. So that's my uh, take on the handlebars today. It's a cold day. I've got to uh, go to the doctor today again. Uh, it's kind of dreary out there. Not raining. It rained all day yesterday. But it is in the 30s today. It's pretty chilly. So, yeah, I won't be riding yet. It's going to take a couple of good rains to rinse all that salt off the road. And then I'm going to wipe this thing down. I mean, it doesn't look bad right now. It's pretty clean. But even the, even the fuel tank has some fingerprints on it. <laughs> Uh, just over the winter of, you know, me dinkering around with it. I have trouble, if I go down on the ground, I have trouble getting back up again. So I have to have something to, to lean on to pull myself up. And sometimes my hand goes on the wrong thing without paying attention. And I leave a handprint on my fuel tank. After all that work, use an F11 to polish it up like brand new. It's going to need some more F11 again. And look at this windshield. I mean, 
it is uh, filthy just from sitting here. It has collected dust. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, yeah, I could use some Windex on that too and clean that thing up before I go. So that gives you an idea what the rest of the bike is like as far as dust and dirt that collected just from pulling the cars in and out. <laughs> All right, kids, I've blabbered on enough this morning. So until next time, ride hard and die free.